I know. I'm late to the party. Yolo Nas was released last week. And judging by the pace of improvements in computer vision scene, that's pretty much old news. But I decided to take a bit more time to give you quite possibly the best training tutorial that you can find on YouTube. Today we'll cover everything from using models pre-trained on Coco dataset and understanding YOLO NAS output data structure through training and keeping track of all important metrics up to evaluation and using fine-tuned model for inference. So as usual, sit back, relax, and let me show you how to use YOLO NAS and how to fine-tune it on custom data set. But before we dive into the code, let's take a step back and let me tell you a bit more about the model itself. So according to DESI, which is the company behind Yolonas, this model is new state of the art when it comes to real-time object detection, most notably beating Yolo v6 and Yolo v8 when it comes to accuracy and speed. At the same time, looks like Yolonas is also a new state of the art when it comes to Roboflow 100, which is a set of 100 datasets coming from Roboflow Universe that you can use to measure the ability of the model to be fine tuned. According to those materials, Yolonas is also very good at detecting small objects, even in low inference resolutions, which, from my experience, is usually a very hard problem to solve. And that's one of the things that we plan to test in our second Yolonas video. But for now, let's jump into the collab and let's learn how to train Yolonas on custom dataset. Ah, by the way, if you plan to use the model for enterprise purposes, as usual, make sure to read the license. Enough of the talking, let's dive into the code. Okay, as usual, we start in the Roboflow Notebooks repository. By the way, we crossed 2000 stars quite recently, I guess one week ago. So if you haven't left the start, until now, uh, make sure to do it right now. And we select the first notebook from the top, train uh, YOLO NAS on custom data set and open it in Google Colab. At the top of the notebook, you can read a bit more about the model itself, but we already covered that part. So let's scroll a bit lower into before you start section and trigger the first cell that will run NVIDIA SMI command. We obviously need to confirm that we want to run this notebook. And after just a few seconds, we should be good to go. The next thing that we need to do is to set up our Python environment. And to do that, we will need to install free Python packages. YOLONAS is distributed via Super Gradients package. And because the model is so fresh, although I'm like a week late with that video, the team still actively developed that model. So for that reason, we decided to pin the version of this package just to keep the Python environment as stable as possible. The two remaining packages are Roboflow and Supervision because we will use dataset coming from Roboflow Universe to train our model and we'll use Supervision to display the results. Spoiler alert, the installation process is actually quite time consuming. And that's because Super Gradient's package serves multiple purposes other than being home for YOLO NAS model. So as usual, I will speed up that process and see you on the other side. Okay, the installation is completed, but there is one more thing that we need to do, and that is restarting the runtime. And it is important to restart the runtime, not delete the runtime. The difference is when you delete the runtime, you lose all the packages you installed, all the files that you downloaded or created. When you restart the runtime, all you do is restart Python interpreter. We need to do that because one of Yolona's dependencies is pre-imported into Python environment, but in incorrect version. And during the installation process, we change the version of that library, but who cares? That problem only exists in Google Colab. You will not face it when you will run it locally or in Docker. So let's just restart. To do that, we go into runtime and select restart runtime. Now we just need to confirm. And after a few seconds, we will see that new runtime is initialized. We can now open up resource tab and keep it open because it will be important during the training process. It will influence our batch size selection. 
I really believe that one of the first things that you should do when you start to play with new model, even if you want to train that model on custom data set, is simply to load pre-trained weights, probably on Coco data set, and run inference on few example images. But before we load the model, we need to select the size of the model that we want to use. YOLO NAS comes with three different sizes, S, M, and L. And as usual, when selecting size of the model, we need to deal with accuracy speed trade-off. Essentially, the larger model we use, the higher accuracy of predictions we can expect, but at the same time, the inference time is also going up. In this tutorial, we'll use L version, but in real life, you need to take into account all different factors. Maybe your model needs to run in real time. Maybe you have limited resources and you need to make sure that the model is small or maybe high accuracy is the main priority. It all depends on your use case. Uh, by the way, let me know if you would like to watch a video about model selection. I was thinking about it, but I'm still not sure. So let me know in the comment if that sounds interesting to you. Let's hit the ground running and load the model into the memory. So we select the device. In our case, it will be GPU accessible in Google Colab. And we select large version of the model. Uh, loading uh, takes a little bit of time, but after a few seconds, we should be fine. To put the model to the test, we need to have data. This particular model is pre-trained on Cocoa data sets, so anything with people, dog, chairs, and tables should be fine. As usual, I'm using images from my own gallery. You can use those too, or upload your own into Google Colab, or you can even download some example data set from Roboflow Universe. Now we pick one of those images, load it using OpenCV, and push it through a neural network. You can see that the first inference take a little bit of time, but then when I change the path and hit shift enter once again, the second inference goes much, much faster. This is common problem with neural networks. They very often need a little bit of work to reach their full performance capacity. That's why you always should preheat your neural network when you do any benchmarking. Anyways, now it's a good opportunity to take a look at the output format that is produced by Yolonas. You very often ask about this kind of insights in videos where we show new models, so let's take a look. For every image that you will use during the inference, network will return image detection prediction object. That object contains three public properties. The first one is image. This one is pretty self-explanatory. It is pretty much NumPy array containing the image we used for inference. The second one is class names, which is the list of categories that were used during the training. And the third one is prediction, not predictions. Uh, like you can see, I made that mistake. And this one stores boxes in XYXY format, confidence and labels. All three are float32 NumPy arrays. Now you can see I'm creating new supervision detections object and I'm passing uh, bounding boxes, uh, confidences and labels as arguments. And when I hit shift enter, we can see visualization. Funny enough, um, Yolonas detected uh, Leo as both dog and bird. Now let's change the path leading to the image uh, to something different, run the inference and go back to our visualization. Now, instead of creating detections object manually, we can use one of the latest supervision features and use from Yolonas connector. We just pass the result of the inference comment out the old implementation, hit shift enter once again, and we see the visualization. Awesome, looks like we are finally ready to start the training. I will use Bundesliga dataset, the dataset that I actually used previously during my YOLO V8 custom training tutorial. If you have your own, feel free to use that. If you don't, feel free to use mine, or just pick another dataset from Roboflow Universe, I guess we have like 100,000 different data sets there. So I'm pretty sure we will find something suitable for you. Before I can download my data set from Roboflow Universe, I need to authenticate myself. So I just click the URL. I get redirected into Roboflow. I click generate token, copy the token, go back to notebook, paste it into input field, press shift enter, 
and my data set should be downloaded in just a second. You can see that the data set is already in my collab environment. Now we can examine the location. In my case, it's under content football player detection one. And you can see in file explorer, it's there. Train test and validation subsets are also in that directory. So far, so good. We are very close to start training, but before we do that, we need to select values of few key parameters. The first one is model size. I'm going for the large one, but like I said, we have two other options, small and medium. Keep in mind that this decision may influence the training process. Larger neural network may take longer to train and require more memory to do that. So if you don't have a lot of resources, maybe going for a smaller architecture is the right choice for you. Next up is batch size. This parameter basically dictates how many images will go through neural network with every iteration. If you have large batch size, the neural network will train faster, but it will require more memory to do so. Before I started recording, I done some experiments and for my neural network, when I train in Colab, eight is pretty much as high I can go. Anything over that may result in out of memory error, which is something I really wouldn't like to happen in the middle of multi-hour training. So let's keep it safe and stay at eight. Ah, and we keep the batch size as the number divisible by two. It helps with memory allocation. Although I saw some papers that argued with that strategy and said that with newer GPUs, it doesn't really matter anymore. I'm not sure I'm used to using powers of two. So that's what I do. But if you have some experience with using batch sizes that are not divisible by two or are not powers of two, let me know in the comments. I'm actually super curious and I would like to learn more. And the last parameter that we need to set is the epoch count. I'm going for 25 and we can start training. We start by importing the trainer and then we need to set data set parameters. Those are pretty much information like dataset location, dataset split, or the name of classes that we are going to use during the training. Now we can use those dataset parameters and pass them into our data loaders to cache our annotations before the training. We hit shift enter and we should see those small loading bars below the cell fill up to 100%. Our data is ready, everything worked as expected. Now we need to pick the checkpoint that we are going to use as the starting point for our training. I will use model that is pre-trained on Coco data set, but remember you can use any checkpoint you want. You can, for example, use that mechanism to restart your training if you feel that your model is not strong enough. To keep track of our key metrics during the training, we'll use TensorBoard. It will refresh automatically after every epoch. It is, however, important to trigger it before you run the actual trainer. Unfortunately, Google Colab won't allow you to run NSL during the training, so it's very important to start it before. Finally, the time has come. We can hit the shift enter for the last time and actually start the training. One thing that you have probably noticed is that training YOLO NAS is much more verbose than, for example, YOLO V8. Looks like it's more flexible at the same time, but people who are used to YOLO V5 or YOLO V8 uh, would need to get used to the fact that you need to do some of the things manually. Stuff that with YOLO V8 require just passing additional parameter into the CLI here force us to import stuff from pip package and write a bit of Python code. The first thing that came to my mind when I was creating this tutorial was our recent tutorial for DETR with transformers. Over there, we also needed to write a bit of Python script to train the model. At the end, it's just a preference, but I believe that there are some people that would take that into consideration. So keep that in mind. In the meantime, our training have started and I want to show you a spike in memory consumption that is visible right now on right hand side in resource tab. If we would use a larger batch size, we might go over the allowed 15-ish gigabytes of memory, which would obviously result in training failure. 
Okay, I think it's time to speed up the training process. Obviously, I won't keep you here for two hours to see the results. Okay, it's epoch number 13, I believe. So we are somewhere in the middle of training. And it is always a good idea to take a look along the way, just to confirm that everything goes according to plan. And like I said, TensorBoard is absolutely a great tool to do that because those charts are being refreshed in real time. And although YOLO NAS is absolutely great with providing us with a lot of information during the training, especially if you use verbose mode, it is always better to look at the chart than to compare values in the logs. And if you prefer logging mechanisms like weights and biases over the tensor board, YOLO NAS supports that two out of the box. Okay, now let me just show you a few charts that are accessible in the tensor board. The one that I'm obviously the most interested in is MAP at uh, 0 0.5. Uh, we see that we are still going up, although the curve is flattening, but the F1 score is still going up uh, by a lot. Everything looks fine, so let's speed up the rest of the training process and take a look at the final results. And the training is done. I know, it was fast. In real life, it was like another one and a half hours of training, something like that. The video is getting a bit long, so let me just quickly show you how you can use that model for inference and for evaluation. The trained model is stored under average model PTH file inside our experiment directory. To load it into the memory, we can use models.get method. Once again, we need to pass the architecture, the name of the classes that will be used during the inference, and the path leading to our PTH file. YOLONAS provides us with convenient way of evaluating our model. We just call the test method of our trainer and provide it with test data loader that we created a few steps above. We hit shift enter and after a few seconds, we are provided with the list of the metrics, amongst them MAP. Metrics are great. They provide us with deeper understanding of model performance, but I decided it would be cool to use our trained model for inference on test images and visualize those results. This way we can pick few images from our train set and compare side by side the annotations and the predictions to straight away see some patterns emerging. For example, I see the model performs quite well when it comes to detecting players, goalkeepers, and referees, but the model detection is quite off. We can confirm that intuition by calculating confusion metrics, which will show us model performance class by class. And after just a few seconds, we get the nice chart that we can analyze. And sure enough, the two classes that are undetected most often are ball and referee. And at the same time, goalkeepers are most frequently misqualified as players. In principle, they are players, they just have completely different role on the pitch and wear completely different uniforms. Now, if during evaluation you will decide that your model underperforms, you can go back and train it a bit more. Like I said before, you can use your final weights as the starting checkpoint for the second phase of your training. If you like your model, you can download it from Google Colab or I hope quite soon, use it with RoboFlow deployment. And that's all for today. I hope that you find that video interesting. I tried to show you everything that I learned about YOLO NAS uh, in this short period of time. I'm actually in the process of creating second part of the video when we will use weights that we trained and push Yolonas to the limit when it comes to speed and ability to detect small objects. If we will have enough time, maybe we will also compare it against Yolov8. Let me know in the comment if that's something that you would like to see. But that's all for today. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with more computer vision content coming to this channel soon. My name is Peter and I see you next time. Bye.